What's going on guys, Victor here, and welcome back to another Tackle Tuesday. Now this video in particular has been requested for a very long time, and if you guys are like me, you guys fish live bait, you guys know exactly how important live bait is, both inshore, offshore, saltwater, freshwater, this video is for you. I'm going to show you guys, with this one right here, how to build a live well from the ground up, but the principles that you guys will learn in this video will carry over to bigger live wells, smaller live wells. But one thing I want to really note is that this is more specific to the land-based angler or a well that's either going to be transported and it may work for someone who has a boat, but it's going to be an on-deck live well. This isn't really for the boaty offshore guy who wants to put an in-deck live well. This is for transporting baits, you know, off in your vehicle, on off piers. If you guys want to transport bait, you guys want to transport fish, stock ponds, all of that stuff can be done with the live well setup that I'm going to teach you guys today. Two things I want to add before we move on with this video. Number one being that all the materials you guys see me using today will be listed in the description box below because I know a lot of people ask and they want to, the ideas, they want to know where to find the materials. And secondly is the fact that I have three different materials right here. You know, something as simple as a five gallon bucket. This is a 20 gallon container. This is the container I'm going to be using and I'm going to, you guys are going to see in the next clip why I chose this one. And here's a 50 gallon drum. But by all means, any type of plastic, durable, hard material that's leak proof that you guys can get your hands on, use it. And I'm serious, preferably with a lid. You guys will see me explain later, later in the video why I prefer a lid. But do not get fancy. A live well is simply meant to hold water. And uh, for light applications such as this, anything will do. So keep that in mind as you guys watch this video. All right guys, so step one for building our live well was actually choosing the container. Now, this is a really neat kind of product I found. It's, it was on Amazon, the link will be in the description box below. And a couple reasons I really like this was, number one, it was 30 or 35 bucks, which is pretty damn cheap for a container with a lid, with a sealed lid right here that you can put on and off, which is very, very important for a live well. Um, one reason being that if you are planning on transporting baits, uh, especially by vehicle, and you guys are going to be transporting salt water like me, you do not want that salt water sloshing around. It is not good for your vehicle. It's going to corrode your batteries or anything that else that it touches. And another thing is you don't want your baits sloshing around. You want something with a lid, preferably that you can close and um, it will preserve the life of your baits better because the water is not going to be moving around as much and your baits aren't going to fall out of your live well. So this was a really cool little neat product. Like I said, link will be in the description box below. And the third thing I really like about it is, look, it comes with these little handles right here. And 20 gallons, I mean, at least for me, it's not that heavy, but if you are with a buddy, you guys can easily pick it up. Whereas a lot of uh, other bins or barrels, like you guys have seen me lug that blue barrel around on the pier, it does not have any handles, so that thing can get very heavy. All right, let's build this thing. So you're gonna need some type of adhesive sealant type of material. I went with 5200. Now I have to warn you, this stuff is very, very strong and it is permanent. So whatever you plan on connecting will remain there and you're probably gonna ruin it if you try to take it apart. I have used silicone sealant in the past, but it's definitely not as strong and not as secure as a connection. Next up, you're gonna need some type of pump. So I went with this Tsunami 500 gallon per hour uh, series pump. I found it on Amazon, it had very good reviews and it seemed to be reliable. Now the pump did come with an aerator spray head and this is where the water actually comes out of and dumps into your live well. But I went with this one right here. This is a 360 degree swiveling uh, spray head and it's nice because it's gonna give you a big wide stream and really oxygenate your water and allow you to control which direction you want your water to actually flow. Here we have some three quarter inch braided PVC. I just had this stuff laying in my garage and this is gonna be the material used to connect your pump to your spray head and you guys are gonna see what it looks like in a second as well as a hose clamp which is gonna make sure you have a nice tight connection to your spray head as well as your pump and as well as this connector piece because I needed this for the pump. Now one thing you gotta figure out is exactly where you want your pump to go. I made sure to put my pump in between my handles that way I didn't have anything uh, blocking my handles and I try to put it as low in the live well as possible and your pump's actually going on the outside and also to add the pump did come with these uh, wires already so you don't need to buy any additional wires. And uh, that me pointing up there, that is where the water comes out of the pump and then the intake goes into the live well. I'm gonna explain exactly why you guys want your pump outside the live well. Now we need a hole saw to match as close as possible the diameter of our intake of our live well pump 
And one thing I really wanted to stress with this video, and if you guys do decide to make a live hole on your own, is to try to just really plan it out and to take your time because when you start drilling holes in things and making uh, connections and sealing things, you cannot really go backwards. You cannot undo it. So make sure you really plan it out thoroughly. That way you don't drill any unnecessary holes. And so here I am drilling on the bottom of the live well. And like I said, this is gonna be uh, in between the two handles because you guys will see, I don't want my hose to get in the way of the handles. So I'm just gonna go all the way through um, slowly making sure to have it nice and flush. I don't want to have any uh, really rough edges and have it perfectly straight is there as well. Now I'm making sure that the intake of the live well pump actually fits in the hole. It's nice and snug and secure. I'm going to drill a second hole at the top of the live well and this is going to be for the aerator spray head. And you want this to be as high as possible on the live well because it's going to dictate your functional water level of the live well because if you have it too low then the aerator spray head isn't doing anything because you're not really having enough distance between the water line and the spray head to oxygenate the water. Now I'm putting on the connector to the outtake of my live well. This is the piece that's gonna be sticking up as well as putting the uh, hose in there. And now I'm just gonna try to align everything up because I gotta actually make a cut in my hose. You guys will see at the bottom, that is the pump, all the way going up to the spray head and I kind of marked it right there. And I honestly don't have anything in the garage. I just had a little razor blade right around me so I just used the razor blade to cut it. Now that our hose is cut, it's time to make sure that the connector pieces that are actually gonna connect the spray head and the live well to the live well itself are gonna be nice and snug and fit. So that's what I'm doing right here on the top one as well as the bottom. And this one is, that's the intake of the live well pump that's actually in, in the live well. Okay, time to apply the 5200 and quick note, do not do this without gloves on like I did. I'm an idiot and I got this stuff all over my hand. It cured and needless to say, I still am picking it off my skin now. But um, as far as where you guys are gonna place this, any of those connector pieces you guys saw, anything that is gonna be touching the live well, at any type of um, hole you guys can possibly imagine where water is gonna get out of, seal it off. You wanna make sure you have nice tight seals and uh, I applied this stuff very liberally to basically anywhere I thought that needed it. If you guys don't have access to the 5200 or you don't want a permanent solution, you can go ahead and use that silicone sealant like I talked about. But as you guys move that stuff around, it's not gonna be as secure as connection as 5200. And I also placed the 5200 on the two holes that I made on the outside and the inside of the live well. And so here I am just lining everything up. I just stuck the pump inside. Now I'm putting the aerator spray head from the inside out, as well as putting my connectors on. And uh, I just made sure I snug everything on there and kind of just dabbed around my finger, which was very stupid looking back at it again. Do not do this, guys. I'm still picking it off my hands as I speak. All right, guys, it is the next day. And as said by the 5200 instructions, they said that it was going to cure in 24 hours. I did let it sit 24 hours overnight and it is uh, relatively hard. It's not really soft. And I went ahead and added these hose clamps right here a little bit earlier to just have a more secure connection for my hose. And another thing that I didn't do on video is uh, I got these little alligator clips right here which are going to attach to my battery terminals and I simply just um, connected them to the ends of the wire that came with the pump. But without further ado it is time to add some water in this bad boy and <laughs> so you guys see that I'm not full of it that it actually works. The live well works and one thing I wanted to note was that swiveling aerator spray head like I showed you guys. Two cool things about that is the fact that you can really control uh, number one where the water is going and the fact that since you can control it you can kind of make it go sideways and you're creating a little current because I always find that my bait does better when there is circulating water and when it kind of gives them an incentive to move around. And another thing is the uh, intake. You can either cut short if you want, and another thing you I recommend to do is either put pantyhose on top of the intake or get a little metal sieve, like little grate, because you do not want stuff going in your pump and you also don't want your bait getting sucked in there as well. Those are just little nuances. And uh, one thing you guys can do to customize these uh, live walls, like one thing I'm gonna add to this one is actually put a drain plug in there. That way I don't have to take uh, water out from the top. I can actually just 
you know, lift open the plug, I can put a little plug at the bottom of the well. And yeah, so if you guys like this video, you guys like these Tackle Tuesdays, and you guys, you guys want to see more like it, please make sure to hit that like button. Comment below what you guys want to see next week or in the future. I'll be seeing all you guys, my land sharks, in that next video.